24 hours huddled up inside with men we'd never met before, but who swiftly felt like our closest friends. Outside, the burst of shells. Inside, old Hindi film music on a decrepit tape recorder. I saw this bombardment, we are sitting here in this bunker, how does it feel? Excellent. You are all looking very calm and music, music playing in the background. Actually, after all this time, uh, uh, it's been almost one and a half months out here. So basically, we are more used to it by now. And it's been something that's uh, presently on and off every day. So it's uh, something that is not new to us. But there's no element of fear ever. Like today when we were standing, it seemed to have, the, the momentum seemed to have picked up quite a bit, you know, from the counter bombardment from that side. Or is this usual? Is this normal? Is this it's normal. It's normal for you? Yeah. It's normal. Is there ever, like, what goes through your mind at times like this? Do you think of back home or, you know, what, what do you think of? Yeah, actually, uh, it's not a question of only me or him or any one soldier. It's a question of all of us who are deployed all here. Of course, as a human being nature, he has to think about his house. I think you were saying the same thing and form my house first, isn't it? Absolutely. So I think uh, it gives the answer. As you said about fear, fear is something that is natural because we are all humans. But then after some time when we sit and realize the very basic nature, first reason why we are here is to overcome that. And uh, it's for the, uh, what I say is, it's call of the duty, the time. But you know, your, your friends, your colleagues, men on the top. Yeah, actually before, uh, like, uh, when you go and face them, it's like a kind of short movie, you know, which runs into your mind and you see your childhood your adulthood and you remember your parents, all your loves and your fears. And then, then for a fraction of a second you say, no, I've got to overcome it. And then that's the thing that pushes you into the... It's like your life passes, you fire a flash. Yeah, it's, hmm? it's like that. Those words stuck with me. Every time I thought of the war, I remembered the understated eloquence of that young man. Ten years later, I meet him again, Vishal Thapa. He and I look together for that bunker that marked that memorable night. We find it. The exact spot, in fact, where it once stood at the old brigade headquarters amid broken down hutments and walls that still bear the signs of war. This is our bunker. This was the bunker. Here was the bunker. That night in the bunker, Vishal was all of 24. I was 26. We talk about how a decade has changed his understanding of what war really means. Do you think people forget how ugly war can be, how cruel it can be? Do you think civilians don't understand that? I won't really put it that way, but uh, it's just that uh, time along with itself puts uh, many blankets on the memories and life has to go on. You know? So a person who's not into army has to go about doing his, he's worried about his, uh, let's start with all the sections of the society, rickshaw wale se lekar, you know, you have uh, other officers. Uh, no, but you know, people talk and... about war so loosely, people talk about war so easily yeah. and people will say, oh, why don't we do this? Why don't we go to war? Why don't we do this? Mm -hmm. And I just feel that I think soldiers who've experienced war probably understand what the cost of war is. Okay, uh, it would be politically incorrect, but uh, I will say just this much that uh, I don't think any soldier of any country 
would, wa would want a war by himself. It is the uh, developments, the situations, uh, economic or political or whatever. So basically, everybody is just following orders. You understand that. So basically, no soldier, according to you, would want a war? No. 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 What's your most vivid memory from that time? What's that one memory that you carry? You know that image that you talk about, the still photographs? What's that one photograph that never goes away? Uh, it's not one single photograph because after so much passage of time, but it is not one photograph or one event. It is like all clustered, mixed of thoughts. Like the scene that you see right now, this is how I remember Dras for next 10 years, the unit location. And then this, the next uh, thought goes on to Tiger Hill, uh, the bombardment by the Bufos onto the Tiger Hill, yeah. uh, bang at the top. Then is the MBRL firing on the yeah. uh, Tololi. Yeah. Yeah. You've seen it yourself. Yeah, of course, yes. And then uh, the smell of uh, gunpowder, constant gunpowder, constant shelling, moving. What about the smell of death? I don't think, uh, personally, of you, that death has a smell. It just has an effect. Okay. So it has to have had some effect on you. Do you feel you're scarred in some ways? Emotionally? Coming from the profession, I would like to say that uh, we kill by profession, not by choice, right? So if we kill someone, someone of us will also die. So it is part of the job, take it or leave it.